Good morning, ladies. So today we are going to be comparing and contrasting nonfiction text again. <clears throat> Our format is a little similar to yesterday. Um, so let's get started. So our learning target for today is I can compare and contrast nonfiction texts. Okay, so let's read about earthquakes first. An earthquake is a sudden and violent shaking of the earth of the ground, sometimes causing great destruction. An earthquake occurs when heat and pressure deep inside the earth cause the earth's crust to crack or move. Earthquakes can happen anywhere on the earth, but usually happen along fault lines. Fault lines are breaks in the earth's crust. Think of the earth's crust as being put together like a giant puzzle. The places where the pieces of the crust meet are called faults. The movement of the plates can happen in several different ways. The plates can push past each other, push against each other, or pull away from each other. This movement of the plates is what causes an earthquake. This causes the movement of the earth. Did you know that there are different types of earthquakes? They are called tectonic, volcanic, volcanic, and explosion earthquakes. A tectonic earthquake is the most common. This happens when rocks, when the rocks on the Earth's crust break because of the plates shifting. A volcanic earthquake takes place during the eruption of a volcano. Explosion earthquakes happen when there has been a chemical or nuclear detonation. These earthquakes can take place in underground mines. Earthquakes can happen at any time without warning. Earthquakes can be very dangerous. They can destroy buildings, roads, houses, and other property. Scientists use the Richter scale to compare the size of earthquakes. An earthquake with a rating of 10 on the Richter scale is a lot stronger than one that has a rating of one or two. Earthquakes can happen on the ocean floor. When this happens, it will often trigger a tsunami. The location below the Earth's surface where earthquake starts is called the hypocenter. The location directly above it on the Earth's surface is called the epicenter. Sometimes after an earthquake occurs, there are several smaller earthquakes that follow. These small earthquakes are called aftershocks. If you live in an area where, an earthquake, where earthquakes have been known to happen, you need to have an earthquake emergency kit and a disaster plan. If an earthquake occurs, you can take shelter under a sturdy piece of furniture or in a doorway. This will protect you if anything falls. All right, let's take a look at tsunamis. Tsunamis. A tsunami is a very large ocean wave caused by an underwater earthquake or a volcanic eruption. When a tsunami is about to happen, the water usually recedes or is pulled back from the coast. When the tsunami, then the tsunami, a huge wave hits the land. They can cause major damage like flooding and destroying homes. Sometimes tsunamis can travel up to 500 miles per hour. Many times during a tsunami, there are several waves. Tsunamis can occur in any major body of water. They are more common in the Pacific Ocean where there are a lot of underwater volcanoes. Sometimes, oops, tsunamis are sometimes referred to as tidal waves because they have the characteristics of large violent waves. However, tsunamis do not have anything to do with the tides. Tsunamis cannot be prevented. Scientists cannot predict to when they will hit exactly. When they can notice, um, when they can, the notice to the public is very short, excuse me. The tsunami cannot be predicted at all. Because most tsunamis are caused by earthquakes, most places near the coast have a warning system for tsunamis. When an earthquake is detected, they can warn people to move to a safe place on higher ground. In December of 2004, an earthquake that happened on the floor of the Indian Ocean called a tsunami, caused a tsunami that killed almost 230,000 people, swept away people and buildings. In March of 2011, a tsunami traveling 497 miles per hour, which was 800 kilometers per hour, hit the coast of Japan. The waves were about 10 miles high. The tsunami killed more than 18,000 people and destroyed thousands of homes and businesses. It caused about $235 billion in damage. Because they are hard to predict, they are very dangerous. The best way to protect yourself from a tsunami is to evacuate the area or get to a high place. All right, let's preview our questions. So again, you might have to pull evidence from both texts, similar to yesterday, uh, to support your answer if your answer is requiring an inference that requires knowledge from both. So let's take a look at our questions first to focus our close read. How do scientists measure earthquakes? What causes an earthquake? So our first two questions are specifically about earthquakes from that article. Number three. Why are certain communities more susceptible to tsunamis than others? What characteristics do these com communities have? Strong about susceptible, meaning they're more likely to happen there. 
just a big word for that. So this is uh, number three is all about the tsunamis article. So let's take a look at number four. How does the information in earthquakes connect to the information in tsunamis? This is a tough question. So what you have to think about is overall, what did you learn in earthquakes that can connect directly to tsunamis? And then we have a true or false question down here. So true or false, you can fully prepare for an earthquake and a tsunami. Defend your stance. Okay, so again, defend your stance, defend your thinking, defend your side with details from the text. Okay, so now it's time to close read. Chunk your text however you would like to. Circle and attempt to define unknown words. Underline key information and remember to focus on information that would help to support your answers because you have already previewed your questions. Summarize in the margin and identify any elements that might be helpful. So again, working with nonfiction text, we're talking about main idea, we're talking about structure, we're talking about format. So similar to yesterday, I would like for you to maybe identify those things in your margin somewhere at the bottom, um, top of your questions. Again, that's just good practice to identify these story elements when working with our nonfiction text. Alrighty, so now I'm going to show you my notes. And again, your notes may look very similar to mine, very different. What you're doing here is you're comparing, focusing on things that would help to support your questions because you've previewed them already. So again, what I have up here is I have my main idea, format and structure. Those are two th three things that I identified first. I kind of just put them blank up at the top to remind myself that, oh, I definitely want to go back to them. So if I take a look here, the way that I chunked my text, I have three large chunks here and I combined a couple of the paragraphs. So first two next three and then those last two so let's take a look here so again um earthquake i wanted to define that and it does for us here right in our very first paragraph an earthquake is a sudden and violent shaking of the ground sometimes causing great destruction and then what i did here is i underlined how it formed so it and when it occurs so it occurs when heat and pressure deep inside the earth cause the earth's crust to crack or move okay so underline that very key information earthquakes can happen anywhere on earth but usually occur along fault lines and then fault lines here they define it for us right in the next paragraph I mean next sentence uh, fault lines are breaks in the earth's, cr earth's crust and then they give kind of a really nice visual here about the a giant puzzle that really kind of helped me understand that as well I circled plates these are those puzzle pieces um, that really kind of stuck with me here but again you might have already known that so maybe that's not something that you circled again a close read helps you to comprehend and you to understand so if it's something that you already know don't waste your time circling it just maybe underline it because you may know it's key information. So my notes for, oh, and then I also underlined how those happen, how they move past each other, push up against each other, or pull. Again, those all that movement can cause earthquakes. So I have causes of earthquakes and fault line info because I thought those faults were very important. Again, something that I wasn't too familiar with. So that's what I identified myself. So for a second trunk, uh, chunk, I... Uh, identified the different types of earthquakes. So again, I wasn't under getting underlined crazy here. I just pulled out those key phrases from my sentences to really draw my eyes so that I can go back and locate evidence very quickly. And then what I have here is just types of earthquakes for the side up here and then measurement and effects. So can happen without warning is very important. The devastation that can cause destroy buildings, roads, houses, and other properties. And then the Richter scale is how they can um, evaluate them. And here I thought that they gave a really great way to kind of show without actually telling us that an earthquake rating with a 10 is a lot stronger than one with a one or a two. So me, I'm inferring here that the lower the score on the Richter scale, the less damaging it is. So here I thought that this was kind of an important part here because earthquakes happen on the ocean floor because I had already read my previous, uh, my not my previous, my next article about tsunamis. This is the part that I really wanted to pay attention to. So earthquakes can happen on the ocean floor. When this happens, it will often trigger a tsunami, okay? And then we talked about the hypocenter and epicenter and I circled those and defined them here for myself. And again, I was like, oh, these are definition context clues just to kind of talk to myself about that. So jumping down to our last ch uh, chunk here, um, aftershock. This was kind of an interesting way that they defined this vocabulary word here. So what they did was they gave us the definition first, and in the next sentence they were like, oh, this is what is called an aftershock. So then um, in my last paragraph here, um, what I underlined was emergency kit and disaster plan, and then I circled that word sturdy for a sturdy piece of furniture because I wanted to make sure that we know that that's a strong um, 
there and they really didn't give us too many clues. I just kind of used um, everything around there thinking that it must have to be a strong piece of furniture to kind of minimize the debris being thrown everywhere and the devastation that could happen here. So um, summary notes for my last chunk here are preparation and protection from when an earthquake occurs. Alrighty, so now let's, uh, oh, so sorry, before we go down, let's take a look at what uh, my main idea is. So main idea, earthquakes come in many different severities, and it is important to react appropriately because you never know when they will happen. Okay, so then my format, informational passage, there's really no other format besides that, similar to our ones yesterday, and structure, cause and effect, and descriptive. So cause and effect I thought was interesting because um, we're talking all about the different plates, how you know, the crust kind of moves things around like puzzle pieces. Um, and then descriptive, again, we're giving those characteristics about earthquakes. So descriptive definitely um, is one of our structures. So let's jump down now to tsunamis. So I want to go through my uh, close reading marks first before I take a look at my main idea structure and format. So again, similar to all the rest, I'm circling tsunami and it defines it for us right after as a very large ocean wave caused by an underground earthquake or volcanic eruption. So um, I took the word recedes. We're not talking about hairlines here, ladies. We're talking about being pulled back from the coast. <laughs> I'll joke there for a second. Okay. Then the tsunami again. So what they did here is they gave us kind of a simplified version. So I thought that that was important to identify as well. Um, Tsunamis can occur in any major body of water, but then I did underline the Pacific Ocean because they said that that's where they're most common. So my notes for my first chunk are causes and characteristics of tsunamis. So let's jump down to my second chunk. I did the next two paragraphs. I put them together. Made sense for me. Um, things that I identified as key information is tsunamis do not have anything to do with the tides because they kind of gave that common misconception that tsunamis may be referred to as tidal waves but they have absolutely nothing to do with the tides. Um, something else that I identified as extremely important is that they cannot be predicted, and scientists never really know when they can hit. So again, that can be kind of connected down here, talking about the warning system for tsunamis when an earthquake is detected, but it doesn't always happen. So again, it is very important for people to, who live in these areas to really pay attention to um, the news and those warnings so that they can evacuate safely if need be. Okay, um, so my summary notes for that chunk are cannot predict tsunami, so it is hard to warn people. Very, very important. So let's take a look at my last chunk. I did our last two paragraphs here. So the big thing that I identified, so here they were giving some information, and I thought that, not that this information wasn't important, but when I previewed my questions, this wasn't really key information. It's very um, important to like my overall knowledge of tsunamis to really show me what devastation can occur, but my questions are not reflective of any of this information in the second to last paragraph, so it's not gonna be something that I'm really gonna focus on too, too much. Um, but that last paragraph gives me the best way to protect yourself from a tsunami is to evacuate to an area or get to a high place. Um, so I have examples of earthquake destruction and then that uh, preparation there at the bottom kind of stands out on its own. So what we're going to do again, and I want to make this very clear, Ms. Egan does have some of her answers down below here, but if you are just copying them, you are doing a very big disservice to yourself. What you're doing here is you're comparing your answers against mine. You are not copying my answers, okay? So I want you to take a look at how I'm structuring, how I am using certain things. All right, so what I want to do is I want to focus on questions four and five because they reflect our learning target for today. So number four is how does the information in earthquakes connect to the information in tsunamis? So I hope that a lot of us had this kind of aha moment because tsunamis can't necessarily happen without earthquakes unless there's that underwater volcano. Um, but most of the time they happen from earthquakes. So let's take a peek at what Ms. Egging said here. The information in earthquakes connect to the information in tsunamis because most tsunamis are formed because of underwater earthquakes. And do you see how, here how I said the word most, not all? We have to be very accurate there because most of them do. Not all, but most. So then let's take a look at my details. In tsunamis, it states a tsunami is a very large ocean wave caused by an underground earthquake or volcano, uh, volcano eruption. Okay, so again, this was a direct quote you see. So you see how I'm saying I set it up. I'm talking about two different texts, so I'm even saying which text I pulled that from. Okay, direct quote has to be in quotes. So um, next paragraph, uh, 
detail for that, excuse me, in paragraph five of earthquake. So now I'm even telling you where I'm getting it in the next article. We learned that earthquakes can trigger tsunamis. So again, same sort of information, but one is pulled from tsunamis and one is pulled from earthquakes to really defend my stance there. Also, it's very important to identify where you're getting your details from. You could have paraphrased here. I chose to do a direct quote, but you could have paraphrased, no big deal. But again, make sure that both are mentioned. So number five, true or false, you can fully prepare for an earthquake and a tsunami. Defend your stance. Okay, so this is what Ms. Egging said. Again, you're checking your answers against mine. They don't have to be exact, but I want you to kind of see the direction that you should be going. False, you cannot fully prepare for an earthquake and or tsunami. Earthquakes cannot be predicted, and therefore tsunamis, which are caused by earthquakes, cannot be predicted. As a result, you cannot fully prepare because you don't know when it will strike. The unpredictability of these natural forces makes them potentially very dangerous. So as you can see here, I have no direct quotes. I just paraphrase my information and I kind of put it together by identifying things that I learned from both and I combined them in both sentences, both of my detail sentences. So again, however you want to structure that is up to you. But again, we are using wraps. So you need to make sure that you have two details. For four and five, you're talking about both articles. One detail has to come from each article. All right, ladies, thank you.